Quick Air product specialist for TOA Electronics and your host to the podcast Sound Supply, releasing every single week. That's on Monday evenings, giving you guys the most up-to-date information on commercial AV. You can find us on YouTube, Anchor, LinkedIn, and even our Facebook page. Excuse me, guys. Check us out. Thank you for attending. Stay tuned. We're about to get started. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to another Advanced Insight Series webinar. This one on creating a, sp a safe space, excuse me, with our VM3000 series. So we're going to take a deep dive down the VM3000 highway, and we're going to get into it. All right, so guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Eric, product specialist here at TOA Electronics. I am a podcaster via Sound Supply a host to all your webinars at the end of each month and a product specialist at TOA where I live and work. All right, guys, the format to today is going to be like we've been doing before. We got two uh, interior panelists. We got Dan and Ian coming in. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about the VM3000 series and, and how it's implemented out there in today's world. And we'll end with a Q&A at the very end. So hold your questions till the end. We'll get to a live Q&A. At the very end of the webinar, just sit tight, take it all in. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions based on what we're going to be discussing. The VM3000 system is super flexible, and um, it could be integrated uh, on a smaller scale or a large scale. So we'll get into that in just a moment. So again, guys, we've got two guys coming in, Dan and Ian. It'll give you a better understanding of how you can install voice evac systems, the difference between a voice evac system and a traditional fire alarm, and much, much more. Okay, guys, so we want to uh, instill the, the fact that voice evacuation systems are an essential piece that helps lead people to safety, right? Clear messaging, a clear, strong broadcast, um, vocal broadcast. This is the benefit of a voice evac system over a traditional fire alarm. You can actually hear somebody speaking, telling you where to go, as opposed to just a ding, ding, ding. Um, and, and what you can do in terms of custom messaging is, is endless, essentially. Um, how you can combine an alarm signal with voice messaging, including, like I said, directing people to certain locations, um, alerting people of where the threat is or to get people away from a certain threat, obviously. Um, so again, that precise information being broadcasted over a large area or a small area clearly, loudly, effectively, 
that's going to get people to where they need to go as quick as possible and as safely as possible. All right. So let me introduce our panelists. We have Ian Weingold. Ian's been with us for a couple of years now. Uh, Ian is based out of the Southeast. He does a lot of sales work down there. His job uh, kind of shifted, uh, but Ian is in charge of the Southeast at the moment. And we have Dan Shore. Dan's been with us for a very long time. Dan is my boss. He's the head of engineering. He is the guru when it comes to the technical details involving the VM3000. So two great minds. We have a guy that is in direct communication with perhaps the end user or the person buying these systems. Then we have Dan who's actually designing and integrating these systems digitally. So either you guys can uh, you know, give these these bids to your customers or understand how things flow from point A to point B. All right, so in today's world, voice evacuation systems are on the rise. They're on the rise, they're needed. You guys look around today, you know, going back to September 11th, that terrible, terrible day, um, to these situations that we have going on, which we just we just recently heard about. There's so many different areas of emergencies where they are instilled uh, at a local location or perhaps over larger locations um, spread apart. You know, it could be multiple locations across the country. It could be a single location, whatever that is. But people are in the need of a clear audible response system to warn people of a threat or pot a potential warning, whatever that may be. So people can can be safe. That's the ultimate goal. And these older fire systems, these bells, you know, okay, we, we understand that's a warning, but then what? What happens then? Um, so there's so many benefits that can be taken in from a system like this uh, versus anything traditional or older out there. So we'll get into um, how these systems actually operate and how they could be used in a non-emergency situation. So we know the VM3000 is a fantastic mixer uh, with priority override, paging, uh, background music. It's, it's a beast is what it is. It's just a, it's, it's an awesome, awesome unit. Um, and to help us better understand uh, these systems in general, we have Ian. Uh, we'll bring in Ian first, and we'll talk about it. Uh, so let me ask Ian this question. Ian, what are all the benefits that you can think of when using a, a voice evacuation system, um, and what are some of the particular features highlighted with the VM3000 series, Ian? So the first thing to so the first thing to really understand when it comes to voice evacuation systems, or really what we would refer to more as just a mass notification system, is their primary purpose of this emergency notification is really uh, hopefully a last resort in an emergency that might occur. So the product really has to do a, a, a different task 99.9% .9 of the time. So a mass notification really is simply an extremely large background music, or paging system. So if you take, for instance, a large college campus where you've got lots of buildings, right? we want to be able to, to access uh, notification and paging out throughout that entire campus. So we'll have maybe some background music in particular zones, paging out to particular zones. And that really is, in theory, what we're talking about here is a very large zone-based sound system. What sets a mass notification or emergency evacuation system apart is going to become its ability to run on standby backup power. And our VM3000s uh, have got uh, backup power for the remote amplifiers. It's going to cover a whole lot of zones. In particular, the VM3000 will talk up to 60 zones. And the equipment can be spread out across the campus. So, um, you know, we might 
put one amplifier out for six zones, another amplifier out for a group of zones, another amplifier out for a group of zones, co-located throughout data closets around that campus or multi-story building or whatever the facility is we're talking about. From there, the importance from a company like TOA's perspective is going to be sound quality, right? Speech intelligibility. So that in the case of an emergency, we're going to have a system that provides the power, the volume to get above the, uh, the din of background noise uh, of a large population of individuals who may be running around in fear. We've got to get volume that surpasses all that background noise and maintains a strong speech intelligibility. So our VM3000 is a powerful amplifier solution. So we can drive, for instance, our ceiling speakers that are rated at 60 watts and 30 watts. That way we can get the sound pressure level up high enough to be heard, um, to be understood, so that individuals in an emergency can follow clear instructions to, for instance, um, egress a building uh, in the safest manner possible. Uh, so from my perspective, that's where the power of VM3000 comes in. It can run your uh, standard duty paging and background, uh, but can also meet the needs for these emergency situations. Ian, well said, as always, thank you. And good to see you, by the way, man. Voice evacuation systems are more than just a typical fire alarm. And I said this, I said this coming into, uh, into the introduction that, We've grown so much uh, from the traditional fire alarm. It's it's actually insane, and you know a lot of end users, a lot of a lot of business developers or company owners, they're not really aware of what's of what's out there. It's our job to let people know that there are solutions out there for essentially any emergency. And audio, you know, being the first real point of contact to a listener or a human as opposed to video where you have to be somewhere certain to visually see something uh, with distributed audio, you know, we want to make sure that entire location is covered. So we're going to be the first point of contact. And then it's going to be this, you know, you know, this, this continuous uh, message or whatever they're going to be using as the emergency takes place, you know, over time. And that's, that's the key. All right, let's go over to Dan. Dan, let's bring you in. Um, Ian, thanks again. Really appreciate it. What are some additional, and Dan, this question is for you. What are some additional benefits with uh, a combination of TOA products? It could be anything. Where, uh, you know, putting that together with the VM3000 series, um, what are you seeing people integrate in our lineup, in TOA's lineup, with the VM3000 system? It could be anything. It could be HX units. It could be uh ceilings, whatever it is in our lineup, what else are people using? What are you seeing people uh, request out there, you know, as time goes on and how flexible, you know, this system can really be? Thanks, Eric. There are several things that we need to keep in mind when we're using a voice evacuation system or an emergency communication system. They're incredibly valuable for directing crowds to respond the correct way in an emergency, whether it's a man-made emergency or a natural emergency. This is a well-established fact and your insurance company and your risk management team will thank you for bringing this up. If they haven't already brought it to your attention, you can bring it to theirs. It will save money on insurance costs. It will make everybody feel more secure. There are a number of different ways that we can utilize this system. I've been in buildings where there are emergency communication systems, paging systems, fire alarm, and in a military installation, giant voice, the four different sets of speakers in the building. With the TOA solution, the VM3000, it's built to TOA's audio quality. TOA has been an audio manufacturer for almost 80 years now. So the full range musical and speech quality on this is exceptional. So you can use it to replace all of the other systems while still meeting 
the requirements for NFPA 72, which is where you find the instructions and the code for mass notification systems, emergency communication systems. So our system can act, as you've heard, as a fire voice system for firemen or in a fire emergency. It can act as a, an emergency communication for, uh, for example, weather-related incidents, and it has the bandwidth to be able to do background music or noise masking. We had a recent project where there was a conference room with a full AV setup. We ran all of that head end into one of the VM3000 extension amplifiers, hooked it up, it was compliant to NFPA 72, and everybody was happy. Excellent sound. Some of our clients include metropolitan areas, for example, Los Angeles Department of Transportation uh, uses the VM3000. Uh, some large insurance companies across the United States have settled on the VM3000 for their design because of the fact that they can combine paging system, background music, and a emergency communication system. All emergency communication systems have one thing in common. They cannot fail. So the VM3000 is battery backed up, AC power with battery backup. Even if you have a generator on the system, there are certain sensitive uh, system electronics, not in the VM3000, but other system electronics that can be damaged by the cutover of a generator. So we battery back up even if there is a generator on, on site. The VM3000 also supervises all of the speaker lines to NFPA 72, UL2572 and UL864 for you code guys out there. So uh, per speaker line, it will tell you if there's a variance in the speaker impedance, if you have a number of speakers drop off the line, all of the control mechanisms are surveilled so that if there's an interruption in any of these circuits, a trouble on the fire alarm system, a trouble on the VM3000, both systems can interact and let the uh, building management know what's going on. Um, that's one of the key aspects of being listed to UL864 and UL2572 is that we do connect to the fire alarm panel. We don't have to for some situations, but to be a true mass notification system, you must connect to the fire alarm and either have the fire alarm take priority over the mass notification system or the mass notification system take priority over the fire. Whatever the authority having jurisdiction states. That is an important word. If you're not familiar with authority having jurisdiction, or AHJ, that's usually the fire marshal. It is the person with the responsibility for determining the emergency requirements for fire alarm and voice notification in the building. Sometimes that's, in the case of Disneyland, they have their own AHJ. In the case of uh, a building in the downtown area, it would be the fire marshal. It depends. Dan, thank you so much. As always, you can see really how flexible this system truly is and how it can be integrated with not only our gear and our vast lineup of, of SKUs and information, but perhaps with uh, another manufacturer's fire system or a fire panel or a phone system, whatever that may be, you know, the options are truly endless. And we want to make sure you guys are aware of that, that this system was designed with flexibility, you know, in mind. All right. So like Ian and Dan said, and, and I've been stating multiple times, you know, throughout this is uh, there is a difference between a voice evac system and a fire alarm. And, you know, the voice evac system, our VM 3000 series is the future. There's just so much more you can do with a system like this, as opposed to just a tone or an alarm people. I don't know if you guys can relate, but, uh, think about when a fire alarm goes off in a location, a location that you don't, that you're not familiar with, or you're not uh, working at, um, and and just a bell starts ringing. 
in a in a sense that's almost like start panicking you know and you're confused people get confused imagine hearing somebody's voice come over the pa through a vm this could be pre-recorded based on the situation you know telling you to either stay calm and then directing you or telling you what to do next instead of pandemonium it's just as simple as i can put it i mean that's you know that's the greatest aspect of a system like this um all right ian maybe you can chime in on, on what i just said uh you know going over the the key differences between a traditional fire alarm and a voice evacuation system like our vm 3000 the primary differences between a standard alarm type of a system is uh, that's what's going to provide uh, alarm bells, alarm tones, flashing strobe lights. Uh, and these systems, some of which will even offer some, some mass notification uh, capabilities, tend to be very low power uh, on the order of speakers being driven at you know, a half a watt. Uh, and that can certainly provide for a small area uh, the ability to, uh, you know, gain voice instruction in an emergency. But in a large facility, whether you look at something like an airport with vast open spaces and um, difficult acoustics to manage, the VM3000 is going to be able to provide the power per channel to drive speakers at a much higher wattage. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to achieve not just a higher uh, sound threshold, a higher overall volume, but we're gonna also be able to maintain clear speech intelligibility along with that. Now we need to look at every situation really individually because in some cases, a horn may be the best solution for reaching a given zone. And we'll take dimensional uh, characteristics and specifics of a building and take that into consideration as we design the appropriate speakers to be driven from the mass notification system. So a horn is going to be great for a long throw, has a very narrow bandwidth, so you're not going to get highs and lows, right? We're not looking for concert type of sound but it's going to reproduce speech incredibly accurately and across vast different vast distances. We also might consider looking at our speaker horns, which is a basically a horn design, but uses a speaker element. That way, when we're utilizing a system for background music and simple paging, you get maybe an overall warmer, uh, richer sound tone but you still have the properties of long throw uh, because there's still a horn design uh, pushing that sound off in any given direction. But TOA also offers ceiling speakers designed for UL applications, uh, pendant type of speakers for UL applications. So we can also provide more traditional speakers in maybe greater quantities covering different areas uh, while providing the aesthetic that a client would like to uh, to have, um, it's just important that we you know make sure that we underline this with the proper UL rated equipment. And fortunately, TOA has got not only UL rating in our mass notification system, but in a variety of of our different speakers that we can drive it as well. Thanks again, Ian. Awesome, awesome stuff, um, guys. So, going back to Ian and Dan what they just went over, what I keep stressing about. Um, again, there are some key considerations you want to take in here. So traditional versus new school, should I say, like a, like a voice evac system such as the VM3000. Pros and cons, there are so many more pros uh, as opposed to an older fire alarm, which I, you know, I like, I like the, the thought of imagine being somewhere that you're unfamiliar with, you hear a ring or this loud whatever. And um, if you guys have been in an emergency situation, it's a scary time. And I, I feel like a traditional alarm just kind of escalates the panic or the emergency. Uh, whereas a voice evac system can then direct you to the next location, the next step of the process, 
to ensure you guys are safe. Uh, reliable functionality. You know, these systems, our VM3000 system has the ability to be battery backed up. Uh, constant line checking throughout. This is line monitoring. You know, this is stuff that Dan's going to, uh, that Dan has spoke of or that he's going to, to bring up. These are questions that we can answer for you guys. Uh, so we had those in mind when this system was designed is reliability. You know, what if the power goes out? What if a line gets cut? You know, all these things are, are, are put into a product like this because it's, it's a life safety product. It could be the solution to a life or death situation. And uh, so much thought is, is, has gone into a product like this where we can literally change the outcome of, of, an, of an event in a sense of safety and, and human life, which is, which is pretty amazing. Um, the durability that, that states into the reliability of the product. Uh, if, if any of you guys have picked up one of these units, either the 3240 VA or the E, which is the extension amp, they're tanks. They are probably our heaviest units in our lineup. They're built like, yeah, they're, they're built like tanks. They're, they're built solid. They're very well built. They're constructed of the highest quality material. And they're designed to last, like what TOA is known for. Our gear is, our gear is, you know, it just works. And it, and it runs for years and years and years. Something that I truly love about, about our products. Um, and the flexibility. Flexibility, future, uh, future expansion. I, I talked about this previously. The unit is super flexible, all programmed by a GUI, by the software. BGM, paging, priority paging. Uh, multiple inputs and output options, mic inputs. Um, it's like, you know, it's like one of our mixer amplified uh, amplifiers, like on steroids almost. It's just, it's full of like everything we offer and then some all built into one chassis. Uh, and expansion is, and, and Dan, Dan will talk about this. Uh, expansion is what this unit is designed to do. You can expand upon this unit and have a, a, a ton of channels to be able to operate over uh, the largest of areas possible. Um, let me bring this into Dan as we uh, talk about expansion. I think this is a good topic for a lot of businesses out there uh, that are, you know, obviously businesses are always looking to grow um, and get larger. Um, Dan, typically at the moment, are you seeing a size criteria in terms of the business or the location or an example you can think of uh, where we recommend a VM 3000 um, or are, you know, is it truly flexible and moldable per client? You know, can it be used for smaller scenarios? We know that it could be used on a large scale, but what about those smaller scales? What about those medium sized scale clients? Um, how can we address if it is, a, if it is, what if it, what if it is a smaller client, how can we address expansion challenges while keeping installation costs low? So obviously, Dan, you, know, you and I, Ian, you know as well, uh, budgets have completely shifted. Cost is going to be a huge factor. So how can we address those challenges while keeping installation costs low? Dan? Sure. Well, the, the first and most obvious way to keep costs down is to only install one set of speakers and amplifiers in your building. So by default, having the VM3000 installed in your system means you don't need to add a paging system or a separate system for background music. It's built in. The sound quality is there. The power is there. That's easily done. Adding to the system can be done, uh, as Ian mentioned before, we can go up to 60 zones with 10 um, uh, total amplifiers. The VM3240VA, which is the brains of the unit, is uh, a 240-watt amplifier, 200 watts derated for UL2572, and you can fit nine extension amplifiers on there. So for emergency communication systems, you have 2,000 watts, 60 zones. For non-emergency use, for example, where you just want a system that you don't have to test every three months. You want to know when there's something wrong with it. You want to make sure that it's on so that your building members may just want to get a tornado warning over the PA, but it's not going to be a, a listed system. 
uh, in in that case, you're going to want uh, the VM3240. And as I said earlier, uh, just having the VM3000 will reduce installation costs because you're combining three or four systems into one. Another way that we reduce cost is that it's a centralized installation. Now, there are certain restrictions on emergency con uh, communication systems. If it's going to be to code, our system needs to be at a single head end per fire alarm panel. So if you have a, uh, say, a campus-wide environment, you would put a VM head end at each building and connect to that fire alarm panel and be able to do 2,000 watts, 60 zones in that building with everything coming back to a central notifying service or however your system is set up. Dan, awesome response there. Awesome response. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, growing off that, Dan, let's get into let's get into a an example of a system or an example of a system that you designed uh, in particular. And then like what if you can think of like a hybrid type system, so not only VM3000 products, obviously speakers need to be involved here, so that would be a separate SKU. Um, but maybe this really cool, interesting, maybe non-conventional installation or design that you did that involved other products in our lineup. And and I noticed, or I mentioned, excuse me, um, you know, we built, we designed this unit with reliability and flexibility in mind. And we wanted to make sure that it was easily integratable with anything out there, not just TOA, but anything out there on the market. Um, so Dan, yeah, mention some products, some TOA products that you uh, built into a VM3000 system and uh, how it worked out. So some of the challenges that we've run into are folks wanting to page over their uh, SIP or VoIP phone system. An emergency system relies on a limited number of inputs to the system for the emergency purposes. We expand off of that to get our general paging and music systems. So folks that want to have a, uh, a phone system uh, used as an emergency communication system, it's, we, we try and discourage them from that because uh, if you've dealt with SIP systems before, they will go out, the server will go out, you have to reboot your phone, you can't have that in an emergency. So what we end up doing is putting a submixer in front and allow those channels to go into that mixer and then out into different zones into the VM3000 system, easily done. It's usually uh, two rack spaces on top and you're good to go. So about a, a, a good use of that, we've done that several times with our uh, M9000 multi-zone uh, mixer. We'll take uh, a, for example, an eight by four configuration of an M9000 put it into the system and the uh, we have four different areas that we can broadcast pages, background music, different program material, and even a, a, a noise masking to a different area of the, of the building. Um, I will make a, uh, a caveat here. There is a caveat. The, the VM3000 is not suitable for high rise applications. All right, um, if you're doing a building with more than four floors, more than five floors, where the fire alarm system is required to zone the, the affected floor, the floor above and the floor below on emergency, we don't do that. The VM3000 is a single zone system. So it goes building wide. When you hit the emergency, it's building wide, same as the fire alarm. So that's the case for most buildings, but in the case of high rises, that's uh, that's an exception. Here in Chicago area, they don't even use uh, uh, they don't use a mass notification system. They don't do uh, a real fire fire alarm system. The fire uh, the fire chief here they have about a one and a half minute response time to high rises. They get a central alarm. They don't disturb the building, and then they. Go in and do a uh, uh, an announcement over the microphone. 
Ian, fantastic, Dan. Great stuff. Uh, let's get into, um, you know, a live Q&A in just a bit. And we'll, you know, please pick Dan and Ian's brain, pick my brain, wherever you guys want to do. If you want to direct a question, do that. And uh, we'll make sure we get those answered. Guys, you want to make sure that you are choosing the right voice evacuation system for your projects, for your clients. And just keep in mind that the VM3000, you know, just take in what Dan and Ian have discussed and what I've discussed over this webinar, how truly flexible it is. And, you know, when you're doing designs, if you guys have clients and they're using traditional systems, like a traditional fire alarm, you know, what are they missing? What, or, or even worse, what potentially could happen, you know, verse, uh, with a traditional system versus an, uh, an up-to-date voice evacuation system like the VM3000, right? All right, guys, that does it. Stick around. Give us a couple seconds while we get ready for your bombardment of amazing questions. This is my favorite part. Let's get into it. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back to answer those questions. Keep them coming. The chat's live. Let's go. Okay, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I want to thank Ian and Dan. Great job, guys. Great job, guys. Pleasure. All right, guys, let's get into some questions. Um, let's check the chat here, and uh, we can definitely answer those. I want to thank uh, all of those who are tuning in currently. We have Adam, Barbara, Dan, Heidi, Jeannie, Karen, Melissa, Mike, Paul, Rob, Tommy. Guys, welcome in. Uh, we do have one question here that I see currently. Uh, this could go either to Dan or Ian. How do you integrate the VM3000 into your current system? So this is kind of generic, but I'm assuming if they have something installed, uh, Dan, maybe a, a BGM system or a simple paging system, uh, would that be would that be an upgrade? Would that be an integration? What do you think? It it's going to depend on your your situation. Um, so if you're say Let's take an example. Let's say you're Walmart and you have an existing uh, paging system, but not an uh, existing uh, emergency communication system, which is not the case with Walmart. But um, right. And you want to upgrade it, change it. Uh, for example, um, uh, actually, I can give you a, a real life example. There's a, a, a hardware store. Uh, that was going up and installing stores all over the U.S. They didn't account for an emergency communication system. They got into a jurisdiction where it was required, and they already had the system spec'd out. The fire marshal signed off on the loudspeakers that they used because they weren't being used for fire. They were being used for mass notification, and they just put the head end in, and life was good. Um, typically, if it's going to be used for uh, UL2572, which is uh, going to be mass, notifi mass notification, what we call voice alarm, not fire alarm, um, the AHJ will be uh, flexible about the speakers and you can drop the head end in. Uh, that's not the case on fire, generally. Um, if uh, you're going to do fire alarm, uh, UL864, listed and have a uh, fire voice with our system that's going to need to use uh, speakers that are rated for life safety on that now uh, toa has life safety speakers um, we have a wide range of them uh, ian mentioned that a little bit earlier uh, so paging horns uh, box speakers pendant speakers regular ceiling speakers high high quality rf122 is uh, listed for life safety um, so you have options there, but uh, if, if it's going to be fire alarm, it's not going to drop in. You do have the, some options available uh, the other way if you're going to do mass notification. So um, feel free to call if that's the case. If it's not going to be uh, a mass notification system and you're looking for a very reliable paging system, go right ahead, swap it out. Cool. Ian, any examples down by you maybe that – Somebody was looking to upgrade to a VM or maybe integrate one. 
you know, we, we had a uh, college campus that was looking into this and what they had was really several individual um, paging systems around a facility. And the idea there was to get something a little bit more unified, but they were definitely concerned with making sure that fire alarm was being combined in as well. So in that case, it really was a conversion over to, uh, uh, to a mass notification system then trying to piggyback on the several individual paging systems that they had in individual buildings. Okay, cool, cool. All right, next question. Uh, here we go. What are the alternatives? And we mentioned, obviously, a fire alarm. What are the uh, alternatives to a, a voice evac system, and why would anybody want to go with and alternative products. So besides a a, fi a typical fire alarm, are there any other alternatives out there aside from a, a voice? E I guess just using your uh, yelling, you know, just your, your BG unit and just screaming over the PA. <laughs> That's, so for fire alarm, um, there are, uh, uh, most fire alarm companies have a voice announce feature on them. Um, where we differ from those, is our ability to expand to uh, high power devices, uh, which the fire alarm uh, companies typically don't have there. You know, they'll have to throw uh, a, a bunch of amplifiers in remote locations to do it. Um, our uh, pendant speakers, uh, most fire alarm companies, I don't believe they have a, a pendant speaker option to cover uh, a floor of a manufacturing facility. So uh, we have uh, some more options for the end user and the designer than a typical fire alarm voice panel, plus the ability to combine systems, which the others generally don't do very well. The other option that certainly comes up with some of the more basic facilities though is, um, and I've done this countless times with our 9,000, is to always make sure that the fire alarm system is able to send a trigger to our amplifier to either power it off or mute it so that any live sound event that's going on is shut down so that a fire alarm only with its lower powered um, mass notification can certainly be heard, right? The last thing you need is, is your sound system overwhelming something that's going on. So always make sure that your systems are, are triggering in. Um, and that's actually a large project that we're involved in right now with Palm Beach Schools, where the existing intercom and alarm system is basically being now tied into an, their upgraded sound systems. And even though it's for uh, you know uh, large scale presentations, and even theatrical purposes, we're inserting our 9,000 into that to make sure that the, uh, the mass notification can loop through that sound system uh, by simply sending in a feed, right? Automatically provides priority through that system. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. All right, let me make sure I'm not missing any questions from you guys here. Um, as always guys, if you have any questions, reach out to us directly, please. Uh, Ian's email is up there on the screen. You got Dan's email, you have my email. Uh, our tech support team's always standing by if you have questions. We know that a system like this could get complicated. Uh, we have Dan's design team, which can set up a free design. There are many tools you guys can use to become familiar with this product. Dan, do we have uh, certification available as well? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, we run certifications for VM3000s uh, once a month. Uh, I believe yeah, I think Shona just released a uh, social media blast on that, right? Like, yeah. Okay. So they uh, we have engineered products that get a regular certification class on them. Um, so check check on the dates. Uh, we've got three or four, and I get them confused. I know where an eight thousand is the uh, first and second, was the second to the Wednesday Thursday of each month, and so they'll be on a regular schedule. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So if you guys need more information on those, shoot Dan an email, shoot us, us an email. We'll clarify that. Again, guys, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're always here to help you guys out and uh, make sure you guys understand uh, more about this product and any other products that we have and other products that might work with this product as well. So keep that in mind. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. 
every Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month, we are releasing these webinars based on your feedback. So we want to we want to hear back from you guys as always. Every Monday at 8 p.m., we release a brand new podcast. I just released one on the infamous everything you need to know nine th about the 9,000 product, which a lot of people don't know about. It's a great tool. Uh, check out that podcast. It tells you everything you need to know about the unit. It's another unit that could get a little bit tricky. And uh, be on the lookout. We release all this stuff to our socials, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. So we're very active in that. And um, I want to, again, thank, thank you, Dan and Ian. Much appreciated, as always. You guys are awesome. Uh, thank you to the team that put this together. Marketing team, much appreciated. And we'll see you guys uh, at the end of next month and hopefully this coming Monday for a podcast. All right, guys, take care. Be safe. And uh, we'll see you next time.